Hi everyone, welcome to Tuesday on week three's reading session um, at the end of the day. We are going to continue on from um, the reading that we did yesterday, uh, which focused a lot on, if I just flick over the screen, um, super solar energy, using the sun for energy and re remarkable and renewables, so using wind and wave energy, um, which again is renewable energy that we don't have to damage the environment to create um, energy that we need to live. So um, we are going to look today at air pollution and transport trouble, which um, are two subjects that we have um, discussed quite a bit in school already. Um, so let's have a look. Right. So air pollution. What I'd like to do is just have a quick look at some of those subheadings that are on those pages there. Are there any that you recognise? For example, the word smog there at the top. Um, I've got a bit of a funny story about smog that I will tell you about in a little second. So 30 um, seconds, which have a look. Can you remember, especially acid rain there, can you remember um, anything about those, um, those words? Okay, so we'll have a look at the air pollution section. Clean air is vital, so important, for creatures to breathe, including people. Some air pollution occurs due to natural causes, such as dust and gases sent into the atmosphere by volcanoes. Most, though, is caused by humans, particularly through industry and vehicles. Here are some of the most common and dangerous substances. So let's have a look at the bottom here, just under the title. Uh, sulfur dioxide. When fossil fuels are burnt, so that's like coal, um, in power stations that contain sulfur, this means with oxygen, it's with, it combines with oxygen to form sulfur dioxide. Breathing in too much can affect how your lungs work. If you breathe in too much when you get older, it can start to destroy your lungs and you find it difficult to breathe. Carbon monoxide, this was something that we looked at the other, last week. Carbon monoxide has no colour or smell, but can be breathing in lots of it can stop your blood carrying healthy levels of oxygen around your body. Carbon monoxide is produced by vehicles, stoves and boilers that burn fossil fuels. So carbon monoxide, unfortunately, there have been quite a lot of silent deaths because of carbon monoxide and people have died from, like it says in the book, breathing it in. And it's dead, it's deadly, but it's also silent. You don't know that you're getting ill until it's too late. Now, a lot of people now, including myself, have carbon monoxide um, testers or alarms. So mine is, because it said in here, it's by your boiler, your boiler that heats your home can create it. Mine sits by my boiler and it alerts me if the levels of carbon monoxide have got too high because me, I could be breathing it in and I don't know about it. I can't sense it until it's too late. Okay. So if you've not got one at home, try and see um, if your parents can get one at home. Really important. Um, smog. So the funny story that I had about smog is where I come from, which is near Middlesbrough, they call um, a lot of people there smoggies. Um, and the reason why is because there were lots and lots of um, industry, shipping industry around Middlesbrough. And when it was really badly polluted with fossil fuels, it used to be really misty and really dark. And that's what they used to call smog. So people that lived around that area who lived in those conditions were called smoggies. And they're still called it now, even though it's not like that anymore. But let's have a look what, what um, it's saying in the book. So. The word smog was first used to describe a mix of fog and smog produced by burning coal. It settled over some cities, like Littlesborough, causing great harm. Over 4,000 people died during the great smog of 1952 in London. Today, most smog is created by when sunlight reacts with nitrogen oxide and other chemicals. The part particles in smog can create a haze over cities. That is that blurry sort of foggy look. Um, it can cause eye irritation, so it can hurt your eyes, inflame lungs, so make it difficult to breathe, and continue to serious health problems such as asthma. So again, it really does affect your lungs. Acid rain. Now, this is something that we looked at um, with fertilizer. Do you remember when it said that the farmers 
um, used to fertilize the plants or when um, the chemical um, warehouses used to put all their chemicals in the water and when it got hot normally the ecosystem would be that the water would evaporate go off in the clouds and then rain but what happened is with that with the dirty water and the chemicals in the same thing would happen and the rain would be acid rain so poisonous rain so rain snow and fog can be polluted by acid pollution in the atmosphere carried by wind acid rain can fall great can fall great distances from where it was created, killing trees and harming freshwater environments and the creatures that live in them, like I said last time. So, my gosh, there's a lot of harm that can be caused through the air, isn't there? Um, so transport trouble, this is another big one. Back in 1900, there were no aircrafts, so nothing that flied. Few buses and only a handful of cars. Today, there are over 1 billion vehicles on the world's roads and more than 100,000 flights carrying passengers every day. And not at the moment, actually, because of Corona, there's not a lot of flights happening at the moment. So one positive thing is that it must be better for the environment. This has a major impact, so a massive effect on the planet. Exhausting. Most cars are powered by petrol, a fossil fuel made by oil. Cars burn fuel and and air in their engines, cylinders, in their engine cylinders, sorry, to produce power. The waste gases created leave the cars through the exhaust system. That's when you see sometimes old cars or cars that need fixing. When you're behind them, they have the really black, black smoke, which shouldn't happen. But that, that is basically showing you what, um, how dangerous it is, what effect it's having on the environment. Um, a device called a catalytic converter removes some harmful gases but all petrol fuel cars still emit, so still push out pollution and carbon dioxide. Diesel vehicles can be among the most polluting. Now, those catalytic converters, um, those special things there that turn the gases to be something less harmful, and um, that's something that my dad um, does as his job, he makes those catalytic converters. Um, so yeah, so cars are very bad. I have a diesel car. Um, and really it's not good for the environment. So I'd like next time when I get a car to maybe look at um, an electric car, but again, they're very expensive, which I think puts a lot of people off. So additional impact. Cars, trucks and motorbikes impact on the environment in other indirect ways. Building a vehicle uses a lot of materials and energy. This includes all the energy used to make the materials that go into the car, as well as the power needed by machines to build it. Vehicle accidents kill an estimated 1.25 million people each year. Many millions more animals are also killed by collisions, that's like crashes with vehicles. At the end of its life, a car can still cause harm. Much of the car can be recycled, but plastics, battery acids and other materials need to be disposed of correctly and they can harm the environment. Millions of kilometres of roads circle the planet. They cut through land once occupied by wild plants, trees and creatures. So a bit like the disforest, disforestization that we were talking about before. Going electric, this is what we also mentioned before, that that's, this is now how the same which should power cars. In 2018, the number of electric cars and buses on the world's roads passed 4 million. Producing electric cars still uses a lot of energy though. The electricity they need to run may also have been generated by burning fossil fuels. However, they still tend to produce less carbon overall than regular cars. Most importantly, they produce no harmful air pollution as they run, which is the key thing. But the problem is to make them is you have to burn fossil fuels. No getting away from it. One thing that they do say, and one tip is cycle and walk wherever you can which is something that I'm trying to do. And they even say, encourage you to get the buses. Because the more people that get a bus, the less people that are driving in individual cars, so it is less, less pollution. Okay, so we have looked today at air pollution and all of the side effects that air pollution can have. Um, and then we've also looked at transport trouble, which has got to do with, with air pollution and um, how bad cars are, for especially diesel cars, are for the environment with the... Um, awful um, pollution that comes out of them and um, a possible solution with electric cars but it uses a lot of fossil fuels to make them and are they 
um, that much of a benefit to make people want to switch because they are very expensive. So that's something maybe that we need to look at in the future. Okay, so um, for our next session um, on Wednesday, we are going to be looking at out and about. This is promoting our use of walking and cycling and energy use at home. So how maybe we could look at cutting down some of our energy at home. Okay, right. Well, I hope you've had a great day, everyone. Um, I hope you stay safe. I hope you're doing your home learning. As some of you might have had a phone call from me recently. Um, and I will see you at the same time tomorrow.